Hi, are you waiting for the real estate crash? If so, I've got some information for you. Tune in. Hello, I'm Anna Dusenberry with Coldwell Banker Capital Gateway Realty, and I'm here today with Stephanie Ham of your lending team at Caliber Home Loans. And Stephanie, I've got some questions. This week, I made a lot of calls to my database. These are first time home buyers, move up buyers, and even seasoned real estate investors. And some of the commonalities I heard in the phone calls were people are waiting for the housing bubble to burst. They're waiting for the real estate crash. And I don't think that's gonna happen. I, there's a lot of economic indicators that don't say that's gonna happen. What are your feelings on that? Well, they're, they're scared and there's a lot of fear in the marketplace mm -hmm. and it depends on you know, where you get your real estate news as to how scared you are. Um, you know, but really there's a lot of difference in today's market and today's facts mm -hmm. versus 2008. But I am um, referring to this as recency bias. Mm -hmm. All they remember is that last time things were bad in 2008, prices uh, were slashed mm -hmm. in half and they were able to um, pick up real estate uh, much uh, more mm -hmm. affordably than where it's priced today. So their fear is buying at the top mm -hmm. of a market, um, perhaps. And so, you know, that's, that's valid, but we should talk about some things that are different and why we don't see how a 2008 type of cataclysmic event mm -hmm. is on the horizon for us. Okay. So first of all, when people talk about the wave of foreclosures coming, they've been talking about this for two years mm -hmm. since COVID started. This wave of foreclosures um, has been discussed. And I guess it goes beyond that. They've always been waiting for the shadow inventory mm -hmm. from 2008 to, to surface. I don't see it. Do you see no, it? it's not out there. And so current stats show that everyone has come out of uh, forbearance quite nicely. And mm -hmm. so there's um, less than 2% of homeowners currently yeah. uh, behind in, in you know foreclosure type proceedings. And that has to do with Equity. Equity in the home. So, you know, I think it's important to define what equity is. Yes. Right? So what is your home worth and what do you owe on it? The difference there, that's your equity. And CoreLogic just came out mm -hmm. with a statistic that the average American homeowner is sitting on $185,000 of equity. So you're, if you run into trouble and you lose your job, mm -hmm. you are not going to let your home go back to the bank. No, no, no. You are not going to need to do a short sale because you, no. it's worth more than what you owe. So you're going to sell that property, mm -hmm. pay your realtor, and take the net, $100,000 mm -hmm. plus, and you're going to just go, go rent for a little bit and figure your stuff out. Right. Um, so when you get into trouble, that's what you do when you have equity. equity. So guess what people did not have in 2008? They had no equity. Right? So you shared a statistic. In 2008, 23% of American homeowners were had no equity. They were underwater, underwater in their homes. So that is a big factor in what led to all the brown lawns, all the recessions, people moving out of their house at midnight. That's That was 2007, 2008, all over. And that's not happening now because people have equity. So what, what led up to 2008, you have to keep in mind, in the early 2000s, as prices were going up and rates were already in the seven, eight, nine percent mm -hmm. range. They were actually coming down during that time. Um, but as affordability became an issue, as it is now, mm -hmm. the marketplace came to the rescue. And you didn't just have Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac with their conventional mm -hmm. loans. You didn't just have FHA and VA with their government loans. You had Alt-A loan products. Yep. You had subprime loan products. So these products came in from Wall Street mm -hmm. and they gave people that work W-2 jobs mm -hmm. that we can see exactly what they make, the ability to state their income. They could do that down to credit scores as low as 580 in some cases. So when you look at the quality of the loans being generated for 100% financing, interest only loans with adjustables <laughs> fixed for two years and a three year prepayment penalty, go figure that one out. You know, you had a lot of goofy stuff going mm -hmm. on. And so, yes, there was um, a run up in artificial demand because all of a sudden you had a sector of the population that could qualify for a loan mm -hmm. that they never could qualify for before, nor do they qualify now. So in 2008, mm -hmm. all that came to a grinding halt through legislation we don't even have prepayment penalties anymore, right. although it would definitely help pricing out these days. Mm -hmm. um, long story, I'll get into that another time <laughs> with you, but, um, but we don't even have them. So long story short, 
everybody who qualified from 2008 on used their real income, their real money for down payment, because unless you're um, using your veterans benefit, mm -hmm. there's no 100% no financing or USDA. Come on now though. So mm -hmm. um, you're, you're using your own down payment, your own income, your own, your, and, and the income was analyzed incessantly, right? So it's very conservative analysis mm -hmm. of your income if it varies at all, if you're not on a salary. So we've been in the tightest underwriting standards since then. So all these folks today were underwritten to those tight standards. So they have equity, mm -hmm. they qualified for their home. I just don't know where we're gonna get this wave of inventory from. Agreed. I, I don't know either. And that's, that's what I'm trying to tell people. And that's what we're trying to share with you today. But it is a good time. These are still historically low rates. They're not pandemic rates, but they're historically low rates. Right. It would be very unhealthy for it to become normal to have a 3% right. mortgage rate. Um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's very unhealthy for an economy as a whole. So although we do think that the government um, underreacted during the pandemic mm -hmm. with rates and now they're overreacting, um, we think they're artificially higher than they really need to be. Once the um, dust settles, so to speak, and we have a little recession, uh, which is usually good for housing, by the way, mm -hmm. if you look historically. So um, once that happens, you know, we might have an opportunity for refinancing in, uh, down into lower rates, but what you're not gonna have another opportunity at uh, is that house that's perfect for you mm -hmm. right down the street. Because let's talk about this, 38% of Americans own their homes with no mortgage. They're never, Amazing. never going to, um, you know, lose that home in a foreclosure. Right. And um, they've got no payment, so they're gonna sit tight, right? And then you've got a record number of people sitting on historically low interest rates. Mm -hmm. So that causes people to not make a move right. when they should make a move. So if the kids go off and get into their own homes, the mom and dad will just keep that two story because they've got a two and a half percent interest rate on it right. versus moving down into that one story they really need. Mm -hmm. And we saw a lot of that going on in 2018 and 19, just mm -hmm. before the pandemic, we shouldn't forget, we were stuck when our inventory problem really started. Right. And what's a more normal inventory for housing is six months. Mm -hmm. And we're approaching two months locally, right? Right. right. So we still are very tight. I still have clients that are subject to counter off multiple counter offers. I've got mm -hmm. two out right now, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, so while there are not maybe 20 offers, mm -hmm. there's two or three, just enough to make it make it fun. Right. Um, but that said, as more inventory builds, buyers are going to have opportunity right now. Um, there are some people that are a little more desperate than others to sell. Maybe they're mm -hmm. trying to move up and they've got contingency deadlines. So we're getting calls regularly from listing agents. Hey, do you have any buyers looking for a house like this? Uh, we'll pay the closing costs this weekend if we can mm -hmm. get them in a contract or we'll pay to buy down the interest rate for them, um, which is really a, a good deal. And we haven't had that in years. And I've never can remember a time that listing agents called me about buyers right. at, in 18 years. It's happening right now. It's happening everywhere. The best way to get in on this is to work with a local realtor and a local lender. We're here to help you. We can help you navigate this crazy market, but a good market. This is a good time to get into the market. Stephanie says this all the time and I love it. If you find your forever home, get in it. You, this can be your forever home. It doesn't have to be your forever loan. That's right, because your alternative is that you're paying rent. Mm -hmm. So if, um, if you need to work on a few things, we can start that process. But ideally, you know, if you can afford the payment, mm -hmm. you should definitely consider buying a home because we still have a uh, tight supply. Builders are not keeping up with the pace of demand and you are going to be able to start building equity for yourself because instead of sending that rent payment off where 100% goes to the landlord, mm -hmm. when you send your mortgage payment in, you get tax deductions possibly, and you also get to reduce your balance owed. So you are building equity in your home with every single payment. Not to mention, you can do anything you want there. You're not right. subject to a 60-day notice to move because nope. the landlord's gonna sell the property. Um, so a lot more freedom um, comes along with that. And aside from that, it's very expensive to move. Mm -hmm. Very expensive to move. So if you're not buying right now, I really challenge you to ask yourself why. What's holding you back? Is it down payment? Mm -hmm. Cool, you need a savings plan. Is it income? Maybe you need a second job. I'm not sure, but I do know rent goes up every year and housing does not usually get a whole lot cheaper. So mm -hmm. if you can get your forever home, this does not have to be your forever loan. If a refinance opportunity arises, we always stay in touch with our clients after closing True. and we'll make sure that you know about it and you have the opportunity to save at that point. 
Give us a call. I'm Anna Dusenberry, Coldwell Banker, 530-574-4321. Stephanie Hamm, 707-688-6241. Dollars <laughs> to